Steve, thank you for your patience. Uh, thank you for holding. This call will be recorded for training and security purposes. How are you this morning, my friend, and where are you? Uh, right now, I'm back in the UK. I actually just flew back to the UK yesterday. Or oh, wow. Okay. Yesterday. Um, but you have been busy here, by the sound of it. I've been very busy. I've been uh, making a lot of noise within the, the government of Portugal. Um, yes. We've been meeting up with a lot of uh, presidents slash mayors. Have you? Uh, vice presidents as well, too. Yeah, there's um, with the new rules that are being rolled out for uh, young families to purchase property, um, a lot of, I guess, uh, government powers have been reaching out and figuring out how they can work with us to provide housing quicker for the younger generations. Excellent. Okay. And this this is within the context of a, a, an idea that you uh, introduced to me, the silver tsunami, uh, yes. which is a, a global uh, demographic shift. Um, that we're, we'll be having more and more older folks living longer and uh, some needing more care. They are, of course, making a very sudden shift from being a member of the productive and taxpaying workforce to being the mirror image almost of needing to be looked after within the social security framework, potentially, and claiming the benefits they paid in for across their lives. And at the other end, there aren't many people being born, especially in Portugal. It's at an all time low. So the new taxpayers, there might be a little bit of a lack of those which will create some interesting challenges. Now, you're not one to run away from interesting challenges. In fact, you quite like <laughs> seeing the opportunity in an interesting challenge like that. Tell us more about that and how that's going to be in Portugal, do you think? Um, I think right now that we're going through like a generational challenge. We're going through a transitional period, whether it's with AI, whether it is through humans, wh whether it is through government powers. I think I mentioned on the last time I was on here that um, 2024 is going to be the first time that there's going to be over uh, 60 elections in the same year mm. in 60 different countries, yes. um, wh which I think is crazy. Like we're, we're going to see a big movement of power and there's going to be, um, you know, as Tig has explained, you know, having stuff on social media, people are going to get called out for things, stuff that, that people have said in the past is going to affect them. And I think that we're going to start to see um maybe not a revolution but um we're going to start to see a big change of how things have been done or what we are used to or what your generation is used to yes um so i think that right now that if we start to look at the long-term challenge of things um looking at the warning lights and figures like for example we know that the baby boomers so this is people that were born during like world war ii era where you know everyone came home and they just were um, making love like rabbits and they were just <laughs> how beautifully put <laughs> um they, 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 to they were other. coming together to uh, to create a, a large group of people you know families of five seven sometimes nine um, yeah. now you don't really find that these days and it's really affecting the sector of what people are doing for work um we're getting to a point now where i think corporations are going to grow in some places but they're also going to die in others wow. so just because we don't have the workforce and because now people are starting to become more entrepreneurial um, we're going to start to see a lot of growths in the uh, public sector for retirement we're going to see, see a lot of growth for uh, immigrant in, uh, integration as well too so let's yeah. take portugal for example mm. um, we don't have enough people in the medical system to take care of the elderly that are here. So people that let's say someone wanted to open up a, a medical facility or a retirement home, um, it's going to be very difficult to do that without the workforce. So yeah. I think that we're going to start working on a, on a way to bring in more people from other countries into Portugal. And we're going to start welcoming more people from Portugal as much as some people don't want to see that um, it needs to happen or else you're just going to end up collapsing on yourself. Yeah. Yes. See, wasn't, wasn't there one of the government ministers at one point, though? Because I think he got quite quite a lot of stick about it, didn't he? He actually advocated that the young people leave Portugal. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. we did yeah. hear that, didn't we? Because it's yeah, a tradition here. Again, understand both sides of that, you know, for better opportunities or whatever, but my goodness. He did say come back. He didn't want them to go forever. Oh, he wanted to wanted them to go and I mean this is the way of, of of life in many ways isn't it for young Portuguese people to go 
to new horizons, get experience and come back. And, and I think maybe that's that for him, maybe that's a bit that that politician complains about. They never say the next bit. They only say the first bit. And I think the next yeah. bit was, you know, they come home and they make a contribution to this society. A bit more context on this, Steve, because I've been doing a little bit of research and you've definitely inspired this. The World Health Organization predicts that the number of people ages 60 and older worldwide will increase from 1 billion from its 2020 figure to 1.4 billion in 2030 and to 2.1 billion by 2050. What's more, the, the WHO notes, while this trend started in high-income countries, for example, in Japan, where 30% of the population is already six, over 60 years old, it is now low- and middle-income countries, you could say, like Portugal, that are experiencing the greatest change. And over here, not only life expectancy improving more than OECD average, but above all, the present Portuguese fertility rate, it's not like it was after the war, Steve, is among the lowest in the whole world. <laughs> Oh, oh. Awesome. right on cue. <laughs> Talk about collapsing. <laughs> Boom. Sorry, I, I, I was I, reading I, I, something. I didn't I only I only heard the sound effect. Is everybody okay? Everyone's okay. Everyone's my iPad okay. just fell. I uh I got a new iPad and I don't have a stand for it. It's, yet, a, so. it's, a, it's a tsunami knocking your phone over. Right. Yeah. The population is currently decreasing in Portugal and may decline by 25% in the next 30 to 40 years, backing up exactly what you said. So with that in mind, um, you're a proactive guy, you're not a sort of an academic pontificator. You're doing something about this and responding to this challenge. What have you got in mind? And can you bring in your whole idea of affordable housing here in Portugal? Because that's going against another trend, isn't it? Where most doomsayers yeah. are saying, oh, you can't move to Portugal anymore. The prices have gone up and you, you can't buy a afford a house anymore. Yeah. Um, maybe I just want to step back a little bit and talk about the, 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 um, the, the subject of the, I believe it was the president that said for Portuguese people to leave. Yeah, I think it might be. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Somebody like that. Somebody like that. Someone in power there. Um, they, um, I think that they're right. And I think if there's anything that I've learned, um, I've been fortunate enough where I've been able to travel from a young age. Um, I spent my younger years working in the oil and gas um, instead of going to school. Um, so I did one year of university and then went to the oil and gas and I made a ton of money and I did very well for myself. But it also allowed me to travel. I went to countries all around the world and I started to see what was going on. And I think that it's a good idea that we have the younger generation go out and explore and see how other people are living. Because, you know, uh, especially as a Canadian, a lot of people think that the Western world is just all sunshines and daisies. But <laughs> everyone, oh, there's jobs to be had in the UK or in Switzerland or here. But they don't think about the cost of living or what it costs to rent a room or what it costs to rent an apartment or a flat. Um, they really don't take into these considerations what's going on in these areas. And in my opinion, we are all flocking over to Portugal because it's more affordable. So um, there's jobs that can be had. There is um, uh, a new wave of... Uh, even myself, I just hired someone who is a, a professional appointment center setter. Okay. It doesn't seem like it's that crazy of a thing, but what it is, is it's streamlining that side of my business where instead of on taking my clients or onboarding my clients, they do all the work for me. They handle all the emails. They handle um, my pre and post purchases of the properties that we're producing. We're having Portuguese people and that's kind of where I base my business around is having Portuguese people understand what they can provide for their own society. Mm. Okay. So I'm willing to work with Portuguese people to show them like, Hey, we can do this, this, and this. And if you would like, you can start your own business after. I, I mean, it's not a very good business model for myself, but what I'm trying to, to, what I'm trying to do is, um, create a society where I don't have to think about, okay, now I have to hire someone and teach someone how to do this. There's someone that, that are already does it. So I can put that work out to them. Yes. You know perfect. what I'm saying? And, and you so, do absolutely know what you're saying. And I love it because you're dealing with the challenge. You know, Savvy Cat, Anna talks like this. You talk like this. You know, doing something to take some responsibility for the impact being caused as well by yes. the phenomenon of people moving to Portugal. Um, you're doing that, but, and you're also helping, I think, local people after maybe they've gone away. And we, I found out who it was, just to, just to clear that up. Um, this is a long time ago, uh, and it was so, I think, um, sorry, uh, Tig, I've hidden you for a moment, but this is um, just too important to get this straight. Uh, this was a long time ago, I think uh, 2012, mm -hmm. Portugal... 
Yes, it's July the 3rd, 2012, Portugal PM tells unemployed to look abroad. Portugal's Prime Minister has been free with his advice to the legions of young and unemployed in his country, but basically told him to go abroad to work. And at the time, the Prime Minister, uh, the President said that's a, he shouldn't be doing that, just to put that straight. It wasn't the President, it was the Prime Minister who said that at the time. So thank you very much for mentioning that. And that's, I think, Steve, you make a very good point. It is a good idea to go abroad, but come back again and make a contribution to your own economy. I think that's what you're saying anyway. Yeah, um, I really think that it's a great idea to create strategies to increase housing supply. It's a good idea to create public housing promotion, um, but it's just about how we get around that. And I think that Portugal can learn some lessons of how the UK and even Canada and the US have done things where, yes, you can provide government housing, but if you give everything for free, no one's going to learn anything. So we need yeah. to also provide the education on that as well, too. Yep, but so well said. Well said. Because, um, I mean, sort of like, the, because the price increase is sort of down in the south of the country, I mean, it's creeping up. I mean, Lisbon as well, obviously, the, the cities is, but the prices are going up and up and up, aren't they, throughout the country, my understanding, isn't it? Yeah, so I, I think that we're starting to see a, a wave happen. So it's it's not going to be forever. So I think that the Algarve is still always going to be a prestigious area just because it's kind of, um, in my opinion, it's kind of like the Cancun of, uh, yeah. of Europe. It's, it's, on, it's, it's on the coast. It has Thank all you. the best beaches. It has all the party life. It reminds me of Cancun. Uh, and I hope I'm not offending anyone saying that no. either. Um, but <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, is that it'll forever be a, a, a money haven where where you get um, a lot of transactional things happening, you're going to start a, to see an increase of demand and an increase of people wanting to be in these locations and an increase of businesses wanting to open up and provide services in these areas, right? Um, and then we have, let's take, for example, even uh, outside of Lisbon, Setubal. Setubal has been growing significantly and has been rising astronomically in price just because of the demand and it's just outside Lisbon and it's just as great as the location. Okay. Um, and this is kind of why I've started investing more in the central region and also the silver coast. Um, not only because there are incentives by the government that are in place for people to invest in these locations, but also it's affordable. I'd say about 60 or to 70% of the people that are relocating to Portugal, they're not relocating to Portugal to um, maintain their expenses or pay more. They're looking to reduce their expenses. Yes, so th th yeah. this is where my business model of providing affordable homes for not only foreigners, but for Portuguese people too. I'm trying to teach Portuguese people, listen, you could buy one of my properties and rent them out and still make a cash flow profit off it of at least a seven or 8% yield annually, mm -hmm. which is really good. We need to kind of change the mindset that, oh, we have to pay taxes. Well, no, let's figure out how we can offset taxes. Well, you can open up a business. You can um, offset it through other companies. You can get property managers in there. You, there's there's other ways to offset things. And um, I believe that they're coming up with, um, uh, I, I believe the government just announced recently on the 10th of May, I'm just double checking my notes here, um, that is going to outline a new strategy for housing in Portugal, okay? Um, so they're addressing things like the housing crisis, um, the general challenge of young people being able to purchase property. Um, so the, I believe that they said that they were going to get rid of, um, I guess, essentially purchasing tax for people under the age of 35. Um, Very good. Going to get, Interesting stuff. Yeah, there, there, there's quite a quite a few things that are going to be popping up. Um, they aim to unlock 25,000 homes under the recovery resilience plan. Um, well, no wonder they want to talk to people like you, Steve. Right, we're running out of time here, and I think maybe we should have a special webinar about this sort of stuff uh, with you, if you're willing, um, because it sure. is a fascinating. It's not going to go anywhere, is it? This is a, 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 no. a and this is what I was writing about for the resident. You know, this is a, a challenge that we need to talk about and think about and prepare for. Um, because if we don't, we might get caught unawares. Um, Mr. S is here, and I'll come to your closing comments, all of you, in just a moment. Bon dia, prezados membros deste canal. Well, thank you very much, Mr. S. Um, we have um, some feedback for you. Bon dia, Steve from Michael. It was great meeting you last month at your seminar in Coimbra. You and your speakers provided a great amount of information on the
on the real estate market in central Portugal. Well done, mate. And uh, Bondi Stephen from the Squire and population from Paz Le Bon. Population growth historically has always been a catalyst for wealth growth. growth. But of course, most jobs require manual labor and we use machines now that they then don't train and invest into the new jobs. We import people instead. There is, you can see that trend certainly here in Portugal. Thank you, all of you. Um, let's go to you in closing then, Steve. What, uh, how can people get involved? What do you suggest people do if they, if they have heard the me message this morning that we need to look at this silver tsunami thing? Um, I would definitely recommend checking out my website. Thank you for putting the plug in there. Um, check out my website, see what deals that we have on there as well, too. Um, I work with all agents across Portugal where they send me deals and then I just vet them and make sure that they're good investments um, and we have our contractors go out and check them. Um, number two you can do is add me on Facebook or follow me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. Um, my handle on uh, Instagram and TikTok is theforeignhammer.pt. The what? Um, the <laughs> foreign hammer. The PT. foreign hammer, my goodness. Okay. Not the four <laughs> with his hammer. <laughs> the foreign hammer. Wow. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Uh, we will talk again, of course. You're in a monthly residency on a Monday morning. And I think a, a special webinar is in order where we can collaborate on that and bring this whole idea. We're holding of one at the end of this month. But well, let us give us the details. I'll make sure those are circulated. Affordable hashtag affordable luxury still here yeah. in Portugal. So cheers, Steve. Thank you for being here this morning. Tig James also has a website. Well, more of a Facebook group. So Tig, your closing yeah. comments. Um, British in Portugal on Facebook, absolutely. And okay. any questions, people can get in touch there. Yeah. Thank you for being That's here. Thank you for being here this morning. Always interesting to talk to you and James. A mindful moment, if, uh, if perhaps, if you have one for us as we go into a new week here in Portugal. Well, the thought I had about it all was that for everything that's been presented today, a mindful attitude will really help improve the quality of your life. My goodness, yes. As ever, bring some mindfulness to what and seems to be a bit of a horny burly. Go on, Tig. One, one thing. I, I read something the other day. Happiness is the quality of your thoughts. Oh my goodness! Oh, and I it's stop. a choice. Yeah. Oh, stop it now, because I want to. We have to stop. <laughs> Look at you! Look at you all um, supplying some fabulous food for thought as we make our way into a new week. Thanks for being here. Big round of applause. As young Mr. Grace used to say, "You've all done terribly well." Well done. <laughs> Thanks. See you soon. Ciao, ciao. Let's go and have a coffee.